Okay, next video we're going to be talking more about acids and bases and more specifically about pH. You guys have heard the term pH and the term pH stands for the potential of hydrogen or the power of hydrogen. Okay, the potential or the power of hydrogen. That's what pH stands for. And most people know the scale. Um, most people learn this early on in grade school, that if I have a pH between 0 and 7, it's acidic. And if I have a substance that has a pH between 7 and 14, it's basic. And if you have a pH of exactly 7, that means it's neutral, and that's water. So remember when we did neutralization reactions in the last video, we're making the neutral substance water in a neutralization reaction, and the pH of the water is 7. Okay. So let's just do a couple of quick uh, videos to show you something about the pH scale and then, or I'm sorry, demonstrations on video uh, with the pH scale and then I want to show you how to do some calculations, okay? So I've got some water in a couple of different flasks, okay? And I'm going to put some phenolphthalein in each of them. Okay, so just a couple of drops of phenolphthalein in water, a couple more drops of phenolphthalein in water, and if you remember, phenolphthalein turns pink only when it's a basic solution. So water is neutral, so it is not a basic solution, so it's clear. Okay. So let's put a drop of acid in one of them. I'll put two. Okay, so if I put acid in, it doesn't change the color at all. Okay. But if I put a couple of drops of base, you're seeing that it has a slight pink color. And this isn't showing up very well, but you can start to see the, the pink color. And what I'll do is make it really pink. So here's a stronger concentration of sodium hydroxide. So if I put that in there, you can see that it turns very pink in a basic solution. Okay. Now just real quick, if you want to see a neutralization reaction, remember we formed water. So let's add some acid to the water. Swirl it around. Notice it's a lot less pink because I'm adding acid and now the pink finally goes away. So I just did a neutralization reaction where the acid and the base are reacting together and forming a neutral solution water in addition to the salt, remember. Okay. Next little demonstration I want to show it has to do with a different indicator called universal indicator. Universal indicator is a mixture of indicators and it has a wider range of colors. So let's put a few drops of universal indicator into each of two flasks. And you can see when I have this universal indicator in pure water, it's green. Okay, so that's an important color to keep in your mind that green with universal indicator means it's neutral or pH 7. Okay, so let's start out with some acid and we're just going to add a single drop of acid and you can see it doesn't change the color a whole lot so let's add a different one or another drop and we'll do it till we get some change. So you can see we're starting to get a change now. We're getting to almost a yellowish green color. Okay, so when a solution is yellow, that means that the pH is about 6. Okay, and we're starting to get hints of a different color change. So if I had a little more acid, I'm turning very yellow, and then we're starting to get into an orange color, And as I add a little more acid, it eventually is going to change to an orange color, which means about pH 5. So let me get a little bit more acid here. 
So orange means pH 5. And then if I add a lot more acid, we eventually get to a red color. So that means it's pH 4 or lower. Okay, so universal indicator is really good for seeing a range of pHs. So again, pH 4 and lower is red. pH 5 would be orange. pH 6 would be yellow. And then pH 7 would be the green. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do the opposite with a base. the base now. Hopefully I didn't mess up my container. So here's the green neutral. Let's add a little bit of base. I think it's base in there. And hopefully it's going to start changing color as I add a little bit of the base. Notice it's getting a little bit more blue. This must not be the right stuff, so I'm going to add slowly a little stronger base, very carefully. So if I add a lot of base, I can eventually get it to look purple. So in Universal Indicator, uh, in a base, it is purple if the pH is about 10 or higher. Okay, so it's good to keep that color in your mind too. So acids and bases are fun with color changes. Now let's talk numbers with pH. Um, we're going to start out uh, talking about one thing that the video talks about in the module 8. And that's something called the ionization or the self-ionization of water. So if I take a couple of water molecules, or let's just take one of them, and if I shake it apart because there's a lot of energy, I can form an H plus and an OH minus. So that can happen in a small fraction of water molecules. Water can act as an acid because it produces H plus, and it can act as a base because it produces OH minus. Now remember, even though there's H plus and OH minus in the solution, in water, they're in equal amounts. Okay, so that means the solution is still neutral. Now we're going to be interested in doing some calculations with pH. So the equation for pH, to calculate that number, you know, where on the scale are we? The pH is defined as the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, or the hydronium ion concentration. Okay, so here the brackets mean concentration in moles per liter. You'll have to calculate the molarity like we did in a previous video. So brackets mean moles per liter of hydrogen ion concentration. So let's calculate the pH of, say, stomach acid. In your stomach, we have a concentration of H plus ions of about 0.1 molar. That's in there in your stomach to help you digest food. So if the H plus concentration is 0.1 molar, let's do the math. Let's do it with a different color. So I'm going to take the negative log of 0.1. And if you have your calculators handy, go ahead and do it. So use your calculators and find the log key. Take the log of 0.1. You'll find that it is negative 1. And then we have the negative on the outside there too. So that makes the negative a positive. So go ahead and try it yourself. And you're going to find that if the hydrogen ion concentration is 0.1 molar, that the pH will be 1. Now, the pH scale goes up by factors of 10. So if I have 1 molar, that's 10 times higher, right? 10 times higher hydrogen ion concentration. So the log of 1 is 0, and so the pH would be 0 for a 1 molar H plus or HCl concentration. Okay, so factors of 10. If I decrease this by a factor of 10, 0.01, that'll be a 2. If I decrease it to 0.001, that'll be a 3. Okay, so practice that with your calculator, plugging that in. Okay? Now let's do it backwards. People will have a little bit of trouble with the calculation here. Let's say that 
I know what the pH of a solution is. Let's say that the pH is 4. Okay? And I could be asked, what is the hydrogen ion concentration? So how do I do this? A little bit of math. Just solve for the unknown that you don't know. And so we're going to unwrap this equation and get this all by itself on one side. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. So that makes a negative 4 here. And then I have a log of H plus. Now how do I get rid of the log? I can't divide by a log. A log is a function. So I have to do the opposite function of a log. So if you look on your calculator where it says log, look at the function above it. The second key is 10 to the x. So you have to do the inverse function of log, which is 10 to the x. So I'm going to do 10 to the x of both sides. So that will be 10 to the minus 4. And then 10 to the log of h plus. The 10 to the x and the log cancel each other out. And that gives you just an h plus concentration. So there I have the h plus concentration is 10 to the negative 4, or 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. So if the pH is 4, then I know that the H plus concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 4. So you can do that math a little bit tougher. Now it doesn't have to be whole numbers. It could be 4.7 right here, right? So then I'd have to do 10 to the negative 4.7 to calculate the H plus. And I can't do that in my head, but calculators can do it. Okay, so real quick, I'll let you guys do this yourself. Let's say I have the pH as... 0.7. Okay. My board doesn't work well. Okay, so how do I do this problem? What's the H plus concentration? Well, again, divide both sides by negative 1. Okay. And then do the 10 to the x for both sides. So 10 to the negative 4.7 is equal to the concentration of H plus. So you'll have to do that in your calculator to see what the decimal looks like. Okay. So I'll roll this video again if you want to get another view of it. All right, last couple of details here. I also have another function called the pOH. It's not as commonly used, but I could find the pOH, which means the power of hydroxide. And it's going to be a very similar equation. So if the pOH uh, wants, is needed to be calculated, I need to know the hydroxide ion concentration in moles per liter. So let's say that I know that the hydroxide ion concentration is, let's say, 0.01 molar. Okay. How do I calculate the pOH? Well, it's going to be a very similar calculation. I just take the log of 0.01, so that part is going to be negative 2, and then the negative of the negative would be a positive, so the pOH would equal 2, okay? So I do exactly the same calculation except I'm interested in the hydroxide ions. So the pOH of a 0.01 molar solution is 2, okay? So that's how I would do the calculation. Now what's the relationship between those two things? Very simple, the pH of a solution plus the pOH of a solution is equal to 14. Okay, the pH and the pOH always have to add up to 14. So let's say that I've got a pOH of a solution is 2. Okay? They might want to ask me, what is the pH of this solution then? Okay, so what's the missing number right there? Well, obviously just subtract 2 from both sides. So the pH of this solution would be 12. Okay, so we're more interested in the pH scale because that's what we're most familiar with. And pH of 12 would tell you, yeah, it's a basic solution. It's above 7. Okay, but if you wanted to find the pOH, you can do that too. Okay, so the pOH would be 2. Okay, so if you have questions about this, when you get to, I think it's section 8.04 in the module on uh, solutions, uh, make sure you come to office hours, and I'm happy to help you out.